Hi, this is uh, Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and I just wanted to do a brief little video uh, demonstrating this uh, DECA acoustic that I just finished setting up for the shop. So let me go ahead and play, play some on it. So, um, yeah, this is a pretty cool guitar. Um, having done a little bit of uh, a little bit of Googling around, it seems like this guitar was probably built in 1967. Um, it was a made in Japan guitar. Um, I'm not exactly sure offhand which of the guitar companies out of Japan were, were, uh, made this particular one. There were a number of companies, including Matsumoku and, Suzuki, and both of the Suzukis and probably a few others that were producing guitars at the time. Um, However, um, what I can tell you is how the guitar was built, which um, is probably more interesting to somebody who's going to want to play it. So uh, one of the things that makes this guitar unique is that it has ladder bracing in it, um, which means that as opposed to the X bracing that you usually see in most modern acoustic guitars, this one has a much older style of bracing, which just has uh, braces that are going perpendicular to the neck. And um, what this kind of gives you is a little bit of a a little bit of more of a sustainy sort of bassy tone um, and uh, kind of the places where I think that that shines is when you're playing like older blues stuff or if you're playing folk music or if you're playing um, you know like things that would have been popular prior to the 1940s because the 1930s was when that X bracing uh, Thing came out um, when Martin started doing that. So guitars prior to that um, were braced similarly to this one here. Um, and so if that's the kind of sound that you're looking for, this is the kind of guitar that will give you that sound. So um, going into some other uh, things that uh, are kind of cool about this guitar, um, it's got a very nice neck profile. Uh, it's kind of a narrower neck, but it's still kind of beefy in back and so like it's comfortable to hold it's just really nice if you're an electric player you might feel pretty comfortable and at home up at the, on this neck um, I I happen to I happen to really like it I, I find especially up in first position this is just this is just really comfortable for uh, for uh, resting your thumb on and just getting some nice traction on these chords um, so some other stuff. I'll mention the work that I did on it, um, which is also going to be important to the player who ends up buying this guitar. So as with all of the instruments that I sell here, um, this one is not coming to you stock. Um, it has a lot of improvements that have been done to it. It's been looked over very thoroughly, inspected. Um, all of the problems that you usually run into buying vintage guitars, like you buy it and find out that it needs brace work or that it's got cracks, etc., 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 is not going to be a problem when you buy this guitar because this one has already been through the shop and had everything done to it. Um, but it's also had a number of upgrades, so I'm going to tell you about the upgrades. Um, so I went ahead and uh, custom fitted this guitar with uh, a bone nut that's carved specially for this guitar. This is not a pre-made, this is cut from a, a big bone blank, a big square bone. Um, and the way that I cut my nuts here is uh, 
very specialized. I've been tweaking my method of doing this for years and years and years, and uh, what I've got now is something that I'm, I'm really happy with and that I've got a low friction nut that really, really helps with tuning stability. So when you play up here, rod cover but you can see that when I pull on that that you can hear that little bit of a warbling that means that that string is moving very smoothly through that nut slot and not binding on it which is going to mean that when you go up here and you adjust your tuner you're not going to end up with one of those situations where you're looking at the needle and it stays put while you're tuning it stays put stays put and then all of a sudden crick and it goes or you tune up and then as you're playing and the guitar vibrates it goes out of tune um, those are problems that are commonly caused by either nuts or string trees. Um, and uh, that's not something that you're going to run into on this guitar. Something else that I did um, was uh, just for the hell of it, um, in this case, because I had this guitar sitting around for a while and I just kind of wanted to do it, um, I went ahead and uh, uh, did a stainless steel fret job on this guitar. So these frets that are in here are much much harder than the nickel silver that you usually find on guitars. So the fret wear that you would normally experience um, in areas of, that you normally play in where you get that pitting is not going to be something that you run into on this guitar for many decades. Um, this, this fret job is probably, is probably going to last the life of the guitar. Um, getting down to some other stuff, uh, one of the other common things that uh, uh, comes with old guitars, especially some of these older Japanese makes, and we're going to have, luthiers in general are going to have to figure out a way to deal with this because there are complications with fixing this um, on, uh, on Japanese guitars in some cases, but a lot of vintage guitars need neck resets when you get them. This one has had it done. Um, the way that the neck reset was done on this guitar was that it was converted to a bolt-on, and uh, the reason that that happened is because one of the reasons that one of the things that makes Japanese guitars, so Yamahas included, even old cool Yamahas, is that you can't often steam the necks off of these guitars. Um, there was some kind of glue that they used back then or some kind of method of, of uh, shimming them that just doesn't allow for, um, doesn't allow for a neat, normal kind of neck reset. And you know, even if you're well practiced at it, um, and I can tell you from experience, it's, uh, it, it doesn't usually go well. And so, um, one of the methods that I've seen people play around with and that I've been playing around with here is actually sawing the neck off of the guitar um, and uh, doing the neck reset with that neck sawn off and converting it then to a, to a bolt-on. And so basically what you have is kind of the same thing that Collins and Taylor has is where there's a butt joint with, uh, with the uh, neck just up against the body and then bolts actually securing it through the, uh, through the uh, sides and into the neck perfectly fine way to join the neck, um, and it's uh, honestly very, very strong. Um, and it looks pretty too, because it gives me the opportunity to do this cool, um, this cool little um, finish flourish over the uh, repair that's been done. And um, I'm getting better at it. I think this looks pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, this is probably like the third guitar I've, uh, I've done this kind of this kind of neck reset on, and uh, yeah, it's been working out pretty well. I've sold a few of these, um, even one to a good friend, and it's still still holding up just fine. So, yeah, going on down the line here, um, we have uh, a custom fit bone saddle. So this guitar is uh, this nut is, or sorry, this saddle is very snug in its uh, bridge slot and. Uh, is going to be transferring energy very, very efficiently from the strings, and it's intonated, which means that despite the fact that uh, you know this is a, a non-tilted compensated bridge, that you're not going to run into the the normal intonation issues that you run into, um, or at least not nearly as bad as you would if you were dealing with you know a standard vintage guitar with that sort of straight saddle arrangement. Intonation, intonated saddles. I just carve all of my saddles that way. Um, different shops do it differently. I just I find it easier to do them that way. Uh, and then, kind of lastly, uh, for the hardware upgrades, um, went ahead and put in some bone custom fit bridge pins. And so when these bridge pins go in, 
They are going into a hole that has been custom reamed and tapered for that bridge pin specifically. And these are labeled on the inside so that when you pull them out, you can see that this one is the A and this one is the B, this one is the D, so on. And the reason that I do that is so that you can get this very tight, snug fit in the uh, bridge pins that uh, really provides a lot of contact area where that string ball goes in and meets up. And uh, what that does is it provides a little bit more sustain and a little bit more treble and, and just a little bit more attack. It's, it's, it's hard to explain. It's kind of hard to put your finger on, on all the little benefits that that gives you, but it does give guitars a bit of an edge um, in terms of tone when you uh, have bone bridge pins. And they look cooler and they last a lot longer too. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of pulling especially from like a 1967 like pulling the old original like plastic bridge pins out and they're just chewed to hell and they're, they're you, sometimes you can't even get them back in the hole because they've been chewed and been sitting there with string tension for so long that they've just kind of warped and mushroomed out of shape and gotten all weird. Um, similarly wood ones, I love wood ones um, for reasons but um, wood ones tend to get chewed up and chipped after a while too because the bone ones the bone ones tend to last a really really long time with very very few issues so that's what you've got in here and um, yeah and uh, after all of that of course giving this guitar a, a really nice low setup you can see how uh, how nice that action is um, this thing plays nice it sounds nice and it looks rad like I love the styling of this guitar. Like personally, I was thinking about um, doing some kind of cool, like country western thing, with installing like a little Telecaster pickup in here and maybe putting some electronics in it. But and I figured, you know, it's going to be sold. I'll let whoever buys it kind of decide what they what direction they want to take with this instrument. Because I think I think it would make a really great acoustic electric too, and just you know, it's a really jangly and yeah, some country rock and um, some rockabilly sound just some outlaw country. So, uh, yeah. These are new strings. This has probably drifted out of tune since I started the video. So, yeah, that's that 1967 Decca. Um, pretty cool guitar. Um, I have a link in the description for this video um, that will go to a reverb uh, page and if this guitar is still listed on that reverb page it is still for sale and so if you'd like to buy it you can buy it there. Um, if you are ha in, if you are, happen to be in the Seattle area or near to or planning on coming through you can also uh, give me a call and uh, ask to come in and take a look and play it yourself and see what you think. Um, this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop. Thank you for watching.